Alrighty, guys, months ago, there was no doubt in the West about Vladimir Putin's next move as he placed his troops near Ukraine's border, moving them closer and closer like chess pieces. He was playing chess. We were playing checkers. But the warmonger came through, true to form, true to his playbook. The war in Ukraine will likely end with Russia's takeover of the country's major cities and with the installation of puppet governments in Kyiv and other cities. Putin has already installed puppet governments in other cities as we speak. So we know full well that's his game plan. The West seems to think somehow that a longer than expected ground war combined with sanctions will force Russia to retreat. There's even the tiny little prayer, hope for a Brutus, an assassination from the inside, hoping for someone to take down the evil Russian Caesar once and for all. But alas, the Ides of March came and went yesterday, or the day before, and it's hard to assassinate someone who's hiding out deep in Russia, not letting a single person within 10 feet of him. You know who knows how to avoid an assassination? Someone who has had people assassinated, a former KGB agent, that's who. So far, the U.S. and our Western allies have tried to stay out of the war as much as possible, possibly minimizing the risk and escalation. In fact, Biden won't shut up, shut up about it, repeatedly saying and tweeting that a no-fly zone is much too risky because it would lead to a conflict with Russia and possibly spark World War III. So, you know, when Donald Trump was president, the leftists loved to say that he could start World War III with his tweets, but now we actually have a president whose tweets might lead to World War III. But here's the point. The fact that Biden keeps saying that means that he's actually believing that Putin is willing to risk an air war with the United States, that Russia is willing to risk so much more, that the evil Russian would actually try to take more than just Ukraine. What is Biden so afraid of? I mean... It's not outside the realm of possibility and something we need to seriously consider. On Russian state TV just a couple of days ago, experts stood around a tiny touchscreen drawing arrows on a map of Europe, taking their Russian audience through the possibility of taking more than just Ukraine, because after all, why stop at Ukraine? Why not take Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, NATO countries, by the way? And this man calmly explains with a smile that it would give the Russians a no-fly zone hmm, over much of Eastern and even Northern Europe. It's madness. And then this, yesterday, the Russian thug used ominous words that we've somehow, somewhere seen and heard before in past history. От подонков и предателей и просто выплюнет их, как случайно залетевшую в рот мушку, выплюнет на панель. Убежден, такое естественное и необходимое самоочищение общества только укрепит нашу страну, нашу солидарность, сплоченность и готовность ответить на любые выборы. Self-cleansing of society. Those are troubling words. But are they just words, or is Putin capable of far worse, of causing as many deaths as one of his idols, Joseph Stalin, who killed four million Ukrainians in the Great Famine of 1932? Just how much risk is Putin willing to take? Before the invasion, Joe Biden made it clear we wouldn't risk war with Russia if Ukraine was invaded. And that, of course, reduced Russia's risk. But does Biden's strategy, if you can even call it that, eliminate all of our risk or does it just kick the can down the road? Because this is important. If Putin takes Ukraine, and it's likely that he will, this changes things significantly. It changes them in Europe, for sure, for NATO countries as well. And make no mistake about it, it changes things for the U.S. Think about it. His whole argument for invading Ukraine was that there were Russian nationals in Ukraine who were being wiped away, that Ukrainians were like Nazis, and that Putin was denazifying Ukraine. Why wouldn't he use that same rationale and reasoning to push further beyond Ukraine? Shouldn't the U.S. be prepared for any scenario? Why does it feel like we're doing nothing, none of that? Let's try out another scenario. Putin has already shown his hand, so why not approve of sending those Polish MiG-29 fighter jets to Ukraine? Why not show Russia right now that we mean business too? One thing is for sure, Biden's strategy has so far failed the country of Ukraine, and clearly the worst is yet to come in this war, Putin's war. Putin has no intention of backing down, folks. And what's worse, the war crimes are piling up, showing just how low and dirty he's willing to go to get what he wants. After weeks of bombing residential buildings, maternity hospitals, his henchmen even bombing 
a building clearly marked children on two sides. Putin's evil is clear for the world to see. Even our fearful leader finally admitted more than three weeks into this war that, yes, Putin is a war criminal. The question now is, what more can and should the U.S. do? And is there an adult anywhere in the White House who can answer that? Because I've yet to see one.